Beloved ones, I am Isis. Awakening comes with many questions and there are many answers or even a ways to get the answers. So I have much to say to you. So I ask my messenger, my channel, to speak for me today as it is quite lengthy and I'm sure you may receive some assistance today with the answers. So here we go. There is a stirring within humanity. An awakening is occurring across the planet and even the earth is in the midst of an initiation into a higher consciousness. On some days you likely feel the shifting of energy at very deep cellular levels. As part of that you may notice a subtle remembering that there are more pieces of the puzzle of existence. When you get in touch with this you may begin to question your teachers, your politicians, religious leaders and other authority figures. Chances are you have more frequent questions about who you are, what you are really doing here and what your role is on your path of light. You likely have heard that you have a mission or purpose for being here and you naturally want to know more about it. Questions therefore tend to percolate from within your consciousness. Sometimes in words you can recognize and other times in more subtle ways. However, it simply leaves you feeling more unsettled as you grapple with the answers to these questions you may feel a sense of even more unrest and sometimes it may appear as though there really aren't any answers the flip side of this is when you receive information about something you are to do and then you are puzzled when opportunities to do that thing fail to mater materialize. Right now, as you hear these words, it is more important than ever that you continue questioning. Ask the deeper questions, even when you think you are receiving no response. Ask them even when it appears that you have hit a brick wall and when it apparent delays cause you to go into cycles of fear and doubt, continue your questions, remembering that an inquiry mind is one of the qualities necessary for your enlightenment. Others around you may seem to be asleep but don't allow their forgetfulness to delay your own awakening. The Buddha and other great enlightened masters did not stop their inquiry simply because others around them weren't yet ready. They asked what others weren't asking and they kept asking even when others accepted the status quo. Consider what will matter in 300 years. <laughs> Many of the other people you live with or work with likely have different types of questions about life. Chances are they are more interested in the hows and whys of mundane happenstance than they are in the deeper meaning of being. What they think is important if they were to manifest it, might not matter in 300 years, 
their soul perhaps reincarnated in another human body at that future time, would not care about the job promotion, the cash in the bank or the 10 month love affair the man or woman obsessed about in the early 21st century. Be sure to be more awake. The more awake you become, you will naturally ask the questions about your key relationships, jobs and other opportunities. But the questions now, however, will be framed quite differently than those you may have heard on your earlier spiritual journey. The following are a few guidelines for approaching your spiritual path in ways that are more sane, more honouring of who you truly are and more heart-centred. First, be willing to acknowledge the divine spark that exists within you, God, or the divine or whatever name you use for it, exists within the DNA of all people on earth. That DNA which is like a record of who you are on every level, can through exploration reveal to you elements of your divine heritage, past conditioning, abilities honed in past lives, ancestral lineage, present circumstances, and even future potential. Scientists are now discovering that there's a symbolic language existing within your DNA that confirms your divine nature. It even has a sound. That sound is your divine light manifest in the physical. At your core, you are that divine spark. With that divine light and divine sound. Sounding that, of course, are layers of human conditioning that have caused you to have amnesia and to develop habits that obscure your true light. The same is true for everyone you meet. They too are divine and have potential for enlightenment at some point in the future. Consider this the next time you're about to speak or act harshly with yourself or another person. Second, begin to trust that you are ready and that regardless of your achievements to date, you can progress even further in this lifetime. You don't need to wait for anything or anyone to shine your light. You can be that light and fulfill your mission one small moment at a time. Don't wait for big assignments. Approach the small things with bigness. Don't let your age, health, worldly status, income, fame or popularity prevent you from acting on your heart's wisdom. Set your intention right now to trust this wisdom more in everyday situations. Trusting it and acting on it is the recipe for your success. Each time you let go of caring so much about whether you appear foolish or what others will think and instead follow what your heart guides you to do, you move that much closer to manifesting what's in your highest good. Your recipe for success by its nature won't look exactly like anyone else's. So let's go 
of comparisons when you find yourself making them. If you are a senior citizen and feel you are complete with your contributions to this world, be willing to question this idea. Regardless of how much longer you have in this incarnation, you can choose to continue learning and evolving until your last breath. In fact, don't be surprised if some of your most potent times are still to come. Third, be open to changing your mind. As part of that question, more and more things you have long accepted as true. Question even the intuitive guidance you may have received in the earlier days of your conscious spiritual journey. You might have been told, for example, that your mission on earth was to write a particular book or to help humanity in a very special way. That guidance may have been appropriate for where you were on your path back then. But perhaps now it's no longer relevant or means something different. Be willing to accept your greatness and your unlimited potential with the same energetic force as you have long accepted your false outer personality, believing it to be the real you. Consider that many of the concepts you have been taught and many of what have been learned to see is a fabrication. A lot of what you think is real is accepted out of habit. Some of it seems true to you because your ancestors have passed to your generation belief systems that are based on lies. You inherited these in your DNA, but you can change them and hence you experience in life. Once you know that they are hiding out in your subconscious, therefore are you willing to explore this unknown territory within yourself and to change it at the DNA level. You greatly accelerate your journey into enlightenment. Think about that. Fourth, set your intent to replace criticism of self and others with curiosity about what really makes people tick. Dive deeper than surface appearances, which won't give you the real picture. No one is all good or all bad. To believe this is a trick of the ego mind that likes to categorize and see the world as a nicely wrapped box. Ask what's underneath the wrapping. Be curious about the dilemmas that you and others face in the quest to become whole. Remember as you are about to judge yourself or someone else that no one is a finished product. Allow your natural inquisitive nature to come forward and get into the space of wonderment. If you are willing to wonder how a person could act in the way that they do, you are one step closer to feeling wonder about the potentials of the human spirit. This can open the door to miracles unfolding one by one in your life. Be alert to subtle energies and learn to decipher them as you communicate with yourself and others. As part of that, 
Learn to decode the messages your body communicates to you, sometimes alerting you about potentially unwise choices and other times validating something you wished were true. And fifth, let go of the desire to be rescued or saved. You don't need saving. That idea is part of the fabrication of traditional religions. According to this idea, you are not yet divine and you must find someone or something outside of yourself to help you become divine. Certainly you can benefit from study with teachers who have experience knowing how, how to break free from human suffering. Keep in mind though that the world's great teachers did not come from to give you the divine spark which is your essence. The Buddha and other enlightened beings did not intend to establish religions or to be worshipped. They sought only to share what they had discovered about humanity's true nature and to open people to their natural state. There are many great ones you can learn from today. Some of them are alive now, sharing universal truths in new ways that the modern person can only easily grasp. Other teachers no longer in physical embodiment are teaching humanity through their wisdom first presented long ago. The truths they come to teach are alive and real, even today. These teachers are a gift to humanity, but do not set them up on a pedestal or think for one moment that they have something you can't ever discover and embody. When you do this, knowingly or unknowingly, you also are discounting your powerful ability to create change. Don't forget that enlightenment, your true natural state, is actually encoded in your very DNA. As you recognize this and let go of false layers of energy that tell you otherwise, you will naturally discover and be able to harness your creative gifts. Begin to embrace this idea. Allow the movement of spirit in your life to reveal to you what a part of you already knows you have the answers to all of your own questions and you are here on earth now to be a part of the greatest changes humanity has ever seen you and others like you are the creators of these changes acknowledge yourself for this role and know that you would not have come at this pivotal point on Earth's history if you are not a divine change maker. As you continue the journey of rediscovering your divine nature, I surround you with my love and blessings. I am Isis at your service, always with love, with Rosalie, my messenger. Namaste. I hope you've enjoyed today or night. <laughs> Namaste.